Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of A Brother's Creed Podcast, where we talk about motivation, experiences, and explore what the world has to offer. We're the Thomas Brothers. I'm Ethan. And I'm Jared. And today we have an awesome podcast for you. We speak with Stan Cherenko. Uh, he owns a, a marketing consulting company. We talk uh, business, life strategies to be more productive, motivated, and successful. So stay tuned. It's going to be great. Let's do it. You can't climb the ladder of success with your hands in the pocket. We will not go quietly into the night. They tell me you're a man with true grit. I am the one who knocks. Don't ever tell me what I can't do, ever! That's how winning is done. All right. Hello. Today we're here with Stan from Stan uh, Consulting LLC. He's here to talk to us about a variety of things. Stan, you own your own uh, marketing business and your Instagram is full of motivational experiences and and just things that inspire me uh, when I've looked through it. And so today we're going to just chat with you about what it is that you do, uh, how you stay motivated and, and a lot of different things. So we're very excited. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you very much for inviting me. I really love what you do, especially that two brothers are joining one mission. That's awesome. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yes, uh, with brothers, you know, you can do anything. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, and and, and I, I kind of like that too. You know, brothers is as well as we're building, hopefully, kind of a brotherhood of everyone. You know, listeners and and people that come together that are all you know trying to like you said, come together, be one and be better. I think we need more of that yeah. today in today's society anyway. <laughs> that's, that's right. You know, like uh, brothers are the best teams. Uh, you need a team to win. It doesn't matter how good your idea, business idea is. If you don't have a team, you want, you, you never win. win. It doesn't matter what it is. It's a sports, it's a religious institution, it's business. I have plenty of examples where, people fail because they fail to build a proper team. And a proper team starts with two, three, maximum five people who are like-minded, who are really thinking the same. And with brothers, that's the best thing what you can do. So awesome, guys. Great, great. Well, thank you. Uh, so Stan, I want you to maybe just talk a little bit about uh, your, uh, your employment, your career history. I know that at one point, you just were traveling like crazy. Then you kind of started your own business. Uh, can you give us maybe just a little bit about your history there and, and what it is that you're doing now? Sure. Um, after graduating from university, I was fortunate enough to uh, to breathe the air of two universities <laughs> in uh, Germany and in UK. And um, after that, uh, my uh, colleagues and uh, university colleagues, they started all... Um, and worked for bigger corporations. So they received a nice wage and were happy. I didn't do that. I went for entrepreneurship. And um, the thing is, I kind of had a jump start from, from low level, entry level, directly to the C level. My first negotiations were on the uh, business owner level immediately. That's the benefit of entrepreneurship. And um, living in Europe, I had the pleasure to travel 50 plus countries and um, solving problems for clients. Uh, and all the problems were actually people related. So when you go and solve problems, first of all, you establish relationships. And when you have a proper relationship with the other party, they will listen. They will listen, they will find common ground, and uh, the problem won't be that hard anymore. If they don't trust you, if you don't have the relationship, that's where it starts. So actually, I was the relationship maker. Doing so, I was able to solve problems. Um, fast forward, I ended up in uh, California. I do not miss Germany at all in terms of the weather. <laughs> 300 days Rain, it's too much for me. <laughs> wow. What, what, what part of Germany is that that has 300 days of rain? <laughs> I'm a, a bit <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, but uh, in terms of uh, 
rain. Uh, we have like 500 milli millimeter a year in uh, rain. So in California, it's 80. So 500 to 80, you can imagine. Yeah, much more sunshiny days. <laughs> yeah, my yeah, absolutely. Uh, my my absolutely. My wife and I after. Uh, after college, we moved to California and lived in, in Orange County area for almost a year. And it is true. The weather is nice for sure. Yeah. But it's again, my uh, one of my friends was joking around about uh, UK. It's like, you don't have nice weather here. So all you can do is drink coffee and work. You have to be wealthy. <laughs> so that's why we have a lot of lazy people. But it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I ended up here, and um, you have to feed the family. I have four children, and um, I start to go back to the roots and knocking on the doors to businesses and offering my services, but nobody listens. So um, I had to find a door opener um, who would be what kind, some kind of introduction of start, start building relationships. So I offered to review, uh, redo websites, redo uh, social media marketing, something which they can feel and see the results. Once they see the results, they are open-minded and are listening for strategies, how to scale, how to change, how to, um, you know, like implement new strategies within the company, which is equally important to outside. So marketing is not only communicating you as a company towards your clients, but within the company, which is one of the best ex uh, examples is Singapore Airlines. They sell through their employees, no, not through ads. Really? And that's awesome. Uh, you know, like you sit, it doesn't matter which class you are sitting in front of the plane or in the rear of the plane, uh, they will never talk to you down. They will go in on the knees and talk to you on the same level. That customer that service. Can, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's actually, again, in a business world where the top exec goes down and talk to you on the same level and said, I need you. Imagine if such a person would address anybody in his company and said, like, I need you this person will turn around the world because he feels important now. And that's what we are missing. We, we are missing actually quite simple, proper relationships. Yeah. One, one thing you said there that I want to ask a little bit more about is, you know, when you said you were, you were in Europe, you were having a lot of success, you were traveling all around Europe, and then you came to America and you said that it was initially hard to get started um, from the start, is that just because you didn't have any connections or what, what was the stumbling block that you ran into that made it more difficult to, to get started in America? Um, one of my business mentors says like, uh, the business world needs to accept you. Um, you can have a lot of, uh, references from abroad, but they are not fitting. It's like, um, you know, like you have five slots here and four slots here. It will never fit. You have to speak the same language. But I'm not talking to the lang um, English or I'm, I'm talking to the inner language. So um, I had to adapt myself and adapt my product to fit the current um, demand. It's not... It's That's why a lot of Germans, by the way, German companies fail to have proper business here in the States. Really? They try to, yeah, they try to sell uh, in a German way. And this is lo logical. It's technological. Nothing wrong about that. But Americans are emotional. <laughs> it's just a different culture. You have to find that, Absolutely. Cul find that Absolutely. culture and play to that culture to be able to, to achieve success. I like that. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of manufacturers uh, whom I worked with had problems selling in the States. And it has nothing to do like with uh, the, that the States preferred local cost, um, local um, suppliers. No, it was actually a miscommunication. It, you are offering, you know, like, why do sometimes you need the same information from but from the another person who speaks the same language with you. 
So let's say two fans of a certain uh, football uh, club meet together. They talk the same language. But if another one comes in, no, you're not one of us. <laughs> yes. In business world, it's the same. That's in, that's interesting. That's uh, that's cool though that you built your you started building your own um, your own business here. And like you said, you started with the basics of just like doing websites or marketing, just like small things, and then proving yourself. And then they're like, "Hey, I like this guy Stan. What else can you do?" And you're like, "Well, you know what? I actually do much more than just this." So you almost like you just tease them, you give them a little bit of a teaser of what you can do. And then once you develop a little bit of that relationship, then you can go and do more. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's again, upsell, cross-sell, downsell. Yes, it's technological terms. But in real life, just build proper relationships. Not a network, proper relationship. Um, it, it's, uh, everybody uh, um, heard this saying that it's seven times cheaper to get a new client than the old one. Uh, t- tend to keep the old one, but nobody's doing it. Uh, you know that the old, I, I, we brought it up. Yeah, I like Apple. Yeah, uh, I use it. Did you know that most of uh, the sales are coming from the Apple users promoting their products for them? So when you have a proper relationship with your client, with your followings, with your uh, whatever you're doing, they will promote your service, your information, your podcast, your business for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, you know, a lot of that entrepreneurship, um, it's to a certain aspects, you're selling yourself and you're building those relationships and you're selling yourself and you're selling your, your, your skills. Um, you know, Going back to the brothers thing, I remember Jared and I, we had uh, a lawn mowing business whenever we were like, you know, 13 and, and, and 15 and, and we would go out on a Saturday and we would knock doors and we would just knock doors and doors and doors and say, hey, can we mow your lawn? You know, give, we'll give you a free estimate and everything. And um, a lot of people said no. And it's kind of like what you were saying is don't try to fight that person that's potentially going to say no because, you know, go out and find another one potentially. And... um you know, I think a lot of times that rejection for an entrepreneur can be can be hard. It can be difficult, and not everybody is is maybe suited for it, or, or that they haven't experienced that. Um, but with that rejection, I think comes motivation and staying motivated through those hard times. What what role do you think motivation plays in kind of a startup of a business or growing an existing business and, and its success? So first of all. I- this is what I like about the States. Uh, if a child knocks on the door, not nowadays, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it's like nobody is complaining that he's uh, starting something new. In Europe, especially in Germany, it's really um, traditional. And you have like, get good grades, get a job, work for several companies nowadays before that, uh, they didn't even uh, look at your resume or CV if you had like five or seven previous employers. And um, the entrepreneurship there is much difficult than here. But anyway, uh, in terms of motivation, as we talked before, uh, previously, uh, I told that motivation is a result. That's my view. Um, motivation is a result of your previous actions. So what you focus on expands. It's a law. It's a law of cause and effect, yeah? So the more focus you spend on results, the more you get results. So uh, instead of focusing on the nose, what do, that's in another case, why actually the dropouts succeed as well? Um, I would like to mention it here since it's passed the dropouts succeed in the world because they are stubborn they do not take the no for an answer so and um, the longer you study the harder it is to get it out of your head and say like oh if i receive no i need a total different strategy no you probably hit the wrong person yeah. yeah, but no, uh, let, let's redo the whole strategy. Then it fails again. No, let's redo the whole strategy. It fails again. Wrong product. 
So uh, put it out and uh, throw it away. So motivation comes definitely from your result. And to have, um, in my personal life, when I start journaling and writing down my little successes, believe me or not, I lived like 30 years. Uh, I traveled almost half of the world. And when I start journaling, I couldn't write five or six results or successes I had in my life. That's how buggy my mind was. Wow. And yeah, and that's how um, unmotivated I was. So it's almost like a like a gratitude journal when you write down your things you're grateful for, but you're talking about almost like a success journal. Write down the successes that you've had on a daily or, or, or weekly basis so that you can continue to say, all right, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm, I'm going. And you found that that has been very successful for you. Exactly. Um, have you guys... Uh, played an instrument from uh, had to play yep, instrument yep, you yep. remember you remember the first uh, uh, first lessons you have to do that you have to do it. it doesn't work that way so oh you did it that good and the child sees that parents are approving and he starts believing in himself or herself and start doing it better and the same is happening here every time every time uh if you start believing in yourself, I'm not talking about uh, being um, selfish or it's in a good way in believing in, that you can solve it. Uh, then you will believe, go out and find for solutions. And it's a hamster rat. It's a, it's a rat race. Once and again, you see that you can accomplish it. You take new tasks which are more complicated, you accomplish it again on the third, on the fourth, on the fifth uh, attempt to, to uh, and on try, it doesn't matter, but you finish it next time, next time, and next time. Um, I have a personal rule. Uh, I do not um, leave a job, leave a product until I get results. Uh, otherwise, I will be drop out everywhere. I worked for seven years without proper results and everybody had talked to me and said like, quit it, get rid of it. No, I did not. And the three remaining years were, the, were actually covering everything which was invested in the previous seven years. In that, as I told, it's motivation is the result of your actions, but you have to to write them down to being to, to see to see that it's actually happening in your life it's yeah. like with the new car when you decide to buy a new car you see it everywhere very true if you de- if you decide to go and journal your successes then it starts triggering here oh that was a success even a little one that was a success i can do that i'm good i can fit it I really like that. It was actually another one of the questions that I had was how does uh, having a positive outlook on life affect success? And I think that's that kind of fits right into that as well. Just that positivity and focusing on the good and believing in the good and, and it just breeds more good, it breeds better things and, and more success um, focusing on that good. So. so one of the things that I've heard a lot of folks say, you know, you talk to any guru out there or, or listen to folks and they talk about affirmations and, and, and doing affirmations in the morning. And I've done some of that. Uh, I'm still trying to get into the science of that and like meditating and just, you know, kind of trying to attract those things to you. Do, do you do that? And have you found success in doing affirmations? Um, no, yes and no. I explain why. <laughs> I'm, uh, I have a kind of a conflict within me in terms of affirmations. I don't like it as it, is as the gurus are actually displaying it. And the reason behind that is my religious views. So I found another way. I find another way and um, a big shout out to Brian Tracy about that. What he is actually uh, suggesting is to having a journal, uh, a normal journal, where you actually write something down on one page and never look it back. It's actually more or less a training. What you do is you write down your goals as they are achieved. 
like three goals every day in the morning. So you write this journal within like 180 days, it's full. But you are writing it down, you're memorizing it, you are shifting your focus in the morning, in the first thing in the morning towards the solution, towards on, uh, the how to find it, uh, how to reach it, how to be able to get these results. Um, it's a kind of um, rewiring your brain. Um, it's a way of affirmation. And I like, personally, I like this one better. So you write down in the morning three goals that you want to achieve that day, and then you... Not that day. Oh, not okay. that day. My long-term goal. Oh, goals. You write, I, you... I'm not talking about to-do to do task. Okay. I'm writing about life goals or five-year goals or three years goals. Do you write the same goals every day? Every day. Oh, okay. Every day. Really? So it's just so, basically your whole journal is just the same five things every single day. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And that's... It's strange, but it works. For me, it works perf perfectly. Yeah, because you, I guess you orient yourself every single morning to those five goals and say, what am I doing today that's going to get me to this, to these five goals? Absolutely. Do Absolutely. You, do you ever find that you get halfway through your journal of those goals and you say, oh, I'm going to add another one and then you add one to the mix and then you keep adding that as you go or? Yes and no. Life is changing. Yes, definitely. But um, let's, let's think about, uh, go back uh, 10 year, 10 months from now. Uh, we didn't have anything, no, no uh, shutdown, nothing. But most of your goals are still the same, right? After 10 months. Um, yes, for instance, um, we would expect another child, for instance. Yeah, or as an example, okay, we add another goal. But uh, the above goal is actually having um, a solid foundation for my family. So um, if, if we go turn to, towards the wheel of life, we have like six or seven major areas in the life to focus on, not more. And the easier you can keep it with five goals or three goals, like literally what will uh, fit in one hand, the easier it is to get it. If you write a list down of goals, 50, 20, you won't never get it. So uh, most of them, you, you will block in one topic and then go after that. I like it. Keep it simple. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Always, always keep it simple. So one of the things I, I want to kind of pivot a little bit more back to the business that you do. So you run a, a, a consulting company and you do like a full suite marketing offerings Tell us a little bit more about um, the clients that you work with and how you help them achieve the success that they want and maybe some of the key pitfalls that you see that companies run into uh, in regards to marketing and, and how they can improve that. So um, for now, I have 60% of are all in the construction business. Then I have some doctors and uh, financial services. Uh, the main case is like, People are coming to me or to us and say, like, uh, I would like to have more traffic. No problem. You can sell in traffic. But I go and ask, why? Yeah, I need more sales. Okay. Why? I need more money. Huh? No. Okay. You want more sales. Imagine now people will come to your website, your home office. Can you handle it? And then we see and that they are having problems. They cannot hold like three or four projects immediately at the same time. They need time in between. So uh, my actually uh, way of doing business is to find critical points, find problems, and um, giving them solution, which is uh, like a complicated machinery, so they can turn on one wheel and in other wheels will be turning faster automatically without burning resources, without burning out, which is happening a lot uh, in the business world, especially in the small business. First of all, they try to do everything themselves. And in a business, if you are doing service business, uh, for we are talking right now, but somebody 
my clients are sure that their work is doing uh, is done on time because all the work is not connected to me. You know what I mean? If I have to talk to clients, but uh, the client will not receive a service or product in this time, they will never buy from me again. Yep. So I try to find those solutions. The best business is which is run without the business owner. Business has to make us free, not uh, be like you. a job where, yeah, <laughs> like like a job where you're you're actually chained towards towards yeah. that. Yeah, and I see that kind of with some entrepreneurs. You know, they're like, I want to leave my nine to five so I can do my own business and work. You know, nine to eight. You know, it's like, well, you would think that if you start your own business, you actually become free and you can actually use your time. Uh, and, and so being independent of the business and, and not having to be that key man to get everything done, I, I think is where most entrepreneurs want to be. So they're not trading their time for money. Um, that's correct. That's correct. And one myth is around there that entrepreneurs have plenty of time. No, they don't. It doesn't feel that work because you love what you do. Uh, but how often is that the case that the children go sleeping, I turn my computer on and work on what I'm doing. Why? Because I love it. Why? Because it doesn't feel, it doesn't burn me out. I do it with pleasure and I see results. I motivate myself over and over again if we go, go back to the previous question. Yeah. So, and uh, what we try to find in the companies is how to do that uh, at the initial stage, somehow this person decided to go this way and they loved. But on the way from the start to today, they uh, lost their love towards job, whatever it is, business or why? What happened there? So we tried to find the previous uh, love, try to free this person. So it's back again in decision making, in getting more clients in sales and outsource, uh, outstaff, um, join venture with another companies to be able to hold and serve the full demand, which is possible, and not only one project at a time. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you about briefly was something that we, you and I talked to earlier on the phone uh, was you mentioned one of the main reasons uh, for every business that you go to, you talk about the right skill set the right mindset, and the right tool set. Can you talk a little bit more about that? And, and, and you know, Ethan hasn't heard that, heard that, and our listeners haven't heard that, but I liked what you said about that. Can you share that? Um, to be honest, I do not remember what I shared with you, <laughs> but... <laughs> well, well, it was basically that uh, you said with a lot of the different companies you go to, it's they either don't have the right skills to do what they need to do, or they don't have the right mindset to believe that they can do it. Um and then they have to have the right tools, whether that's the, yeah. uh, you know, oh, yeah. go ahead. That's what I'm actually teaching is uh, skill set, mindset, tool set. Uh, the basics are quite easy. Uh, it's all one ecosystem and you cannot take one out and putting one uh, and concentrating only on that. Studies have shown over and over and over again, if you improve one thing, and other things in other areas in your life will be improving as well. Let's assume I start work out again. I do, but <laughs> let's assume. So I start to train my muscles. First of all, my energy level went up. And every other areas in my life which are related to the energy level, they will be benefiting it for, from it. So skill sets, skill sets are crucial to um, to change the mindset and mindsets are crucial to get your proper skill sets. It's a kind of a chicken and egg, which is uh, come first. That's why you cannot just go out and concentrate only on mindset or only on tools on only or on skill set. That's why three pillars. So um, mindset. Yes. I have to believe my mindset. I have to have a proper uh, belief system, money system, um, blueprint, um, my proper vision and my ultimate goal. What is that? I have to have hunger for knowledge uh, in my mind to program myself. Yeah. The skill set is not only about money management. It's about time management. How uh, a lot of people say time management, but actually you can't manage time. 
it's 24 hours. That's it. You can manage. Very true. <laughs> you can manage only what you are doing right now in the current uh, second or minute or hour. Yeah, but not the time. So it's actually more or less a priority system. And it's very crucial. Um, <laughs> some people are asking, how can I earn a lot of money? Yeah, stop doing things which are costless. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, if I true. would like to, to, to earn $1,000 per hour, stop doing things which bring me in $5 an hour or $10 for, per hour. Yeah. And uh, yes, at the beginning, it's difficult, especially in entrepreneurship where you have to do everything. At the beginning, uh, it doesn't matter what you do. You do your own social media. You do your own vid video editing. You do your own scripts. Uh, then you get knowledge. Then you know exactly what you have to ask from other people. Asking questions, for instance, is a skill set as well. Uh, because if you try to find a proper team, you will every time receive the same or result based upon your requirements or questions. If you had a wrong requirements or you never communicated those requirements you will get bad results and uh, blaming a person who whom you outsourced is actually wrong you have been uh, the guy or me uh, who hired him who gave them an information which results they uh, should do to you so uh, asking questions be clear about everything what you do it's a skill set. And, okay, tool sets is a marketing instruments which are out there. They are changing every time. But uh, the principles are the same. It doesn't matter which algorithm uh, on which platform, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and so on. Uh, it has all the same algorithm. People have to interact with your uh, information which you post. And they have to like it to share it, to discuss it, ask questions. So there have to be build relationship and you will have engagement. Yeah, one of the questions I have, and I kind of run a, a small consulting business myself, and and I feel like social media, Instagram and Facebook are such powerhouses for marketing, but from a, from a marketing standpoint, I feel like, my my business is so niche that it would be hard to target those people. So I guess my question to you is, how do you target people on Instagram and or Facebook uh, when really those are not really business platforms? Have you had, uh, and you said you yeah. work mainly with construction companies. So I mean, like, how do you target someone who owns a, a construction company on those platforms? Uh, it's actually uh, easy and not easy. Easy in terms of everything is accessible within two, three clicks. So it's doable. Not easy because it requires time. And that's where the most of the problems lies. I can do it two, three, four, five times, and then I don't see results, and that's it. We have to be like Thomas Edison. 10,000 missed <laughs> yeah. tests yeah, yeah. In, in, in that case we have to be like that so let me assume some uh, somebody did the work for you already so if you go and look influencers upon influencers social media agencies whatever it is somebody follows already your or has the following or follows your ideal um your ideal Path, uh, clients, yeah, yeah. followers, and so on. Somebody did it already. And okay, at the beginning, it, you know, like like two circles, uh, It's you have only a small uh, interruption of, or uh, overlapping uh, in, in your area what you are doing and with these uh, followers or with these influencers. So go out, like, comment, share ideas on the people's profiles. But then you have to know the algorithm as well. You don't. You cannot uh, comment more than thirty times in an hour. Then we'll be flagged and so on. So be really specific about it. Do the huh. work. Start introducing yourself. Give, give, provide value, and only after four, five, six times ask. Uh, when you provide value, people will check you out. 
And it's again, it's algorithm uh, are all the time the same. Uh, the more people will check you out, the more uh, any platform will suggest your profile to similar people. That's very true. That's that's some good some sage advice. I'll, I'll take that. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I um, I I kind of like that. That because uh, the underlying factor is is effort is is putting forth the time. Um, and obviously, time is something that you know you had said earlier that you only have 24 hours. So it's kind of you know choose your choose your time wisely. Do you want to? spend that time making $5 an hour or $1,000 an hour. And so, um, you know, entrepreneurship is um, is a really interesting thing. I'm sure that, that a lot of people, and especially our listeners, that, that, you know, have side gigs or they have things that they uh, they do to try to make money uh, in, in other ways. Um, one question, we kind of touched on it earlier that I think is interesting um, is I... I know a lot of people that um, graduated at the same time as I did, um, and you had mentioned as well that in Germany, when you graduated, you had a lot of your friends went straight into uh, a career working for a company, um, and then I'm sure I'm sure some people are thrive in that type of atmosphere, um, but I know a lot of other people that kind of feel stuck. Uh, they just feel like they're they're stuck in their career or stuck in their job. What advice um, as as a consultant or or have you seen this type of thing in other businesses? Um, what kind of advice would you give that person uh, looking through uh, a lot of the the reels and stuff like that that you have on Instagram and motivational things? What advice would you give that person that feels stuck in a career or a job? Watch Rocky Free. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one that's a really good one so, mr uh, mr t yeah exactly believe me or not believe me or not somehow i think about this uh scene over and over again when um he lost against mr t and uh creed asked him to go to his first um his first gym and said like look in the mirror look at these guys Look how hungry they were, or they are. And you are like this tiger who uh, uh, um, have been 20 years in, in the cage, and your eyes are not flashing anymore. Yeah, You lost, so, lost the eye of the tiger. Exactly, exactly. And here is the case. Why did I actually start it at, at, the, at the end, uh, at the beginning? Uh, what was the reason why I did it? So... From, from the uh, graduation towards now, something has happened where I lost my eye of the tiger. Something has happened. So go back, write, write down your goals. Um, I had a friend of mine, one of the best, and we had plenty of ideas uh, during our st study years and a lot of entrepreneurial ideas. Um, I lost him on the way. So he is stuck in his career. He cannot pro promote himself any further. And he's kind of living day in, day out without bigger goal. So it's, when we talked and remembered what we actually planned, the first thing what he did is actually quitting his job. But uh, it's not what I'm talking about here. Uh, in his case, it was a different one. But uh, what I'm talking about is actually if... The, uh, there are two possibilities. First of all, the environment has changed and the whole company has changed and it makes no more sense to stay because it's not according to your values anymore. Write down your values. You have, it doesn't matter whom you are working for. Your values are more important than uh, the company or the job. Uh, because if you once over and over and over again will go against your values, you will lose yourself as a person. Absolutely. That's very good. So another thing is um, you have to uh, work on your goals, on your bigger goals. Uh, I saw that in my case, for instance, uh, when I didn't have a plan, I worked automatically on the plan of somebody else. When I wrote down my plan 
everything has changed because now I decided, should I do this task or not based upon my bigger plan, which is beneficial to me. So jobs are great in terms of security sometimes and nothing bad about that. But do you work to work your ultimate goal or not? Do you work according to your values or not? Those are two questions which I would give those people uh, as an advice. That's excellent. Uh, excellent advice. And I'm just soaking it up here. Well, one of the questions I had, you talked about values. And uh, we. you said that when you were working in your career, at one point you were traveling all around Europe and, and doing lots of stuff. I think you had mentioned to me before in a conversation that you were away from home almost all the time. Uh, and now you have four small kids at home. And talk to me about how you have... It's, it sounds like uh, you've really prioritized that time with your family. And talk to me about work-life balance and how you manage that as an entrepreneur and, and how you keep your family as a priority. You strike me as a man who has his family as a priority, so that's why I say that. How, how do you keep your family as a priority but yet continue to, to hammer on the, on, on the business side of things? So uh, there are actually two people uh, two, uh, who actually covered it. We are living in a really good time. Uh, it doesn't matter which problem you have, somebody already addressed it. So uh, when you're talking about work-life balance, I'm thinking immediately of Zig Ziglar and Brent Burchard. Immediately. Uh, Brent Burchard is uh, suggesting to have transition times. Um, I do not go into my house after a meeting immediately. Just like, like you know, like um, closing one door, opening another door mentally. So I sit in the car for 15 seconds. That's how I did it, actually, back in the days. For 15, 30 seconds and shut it actually down. Everything. Um, you are preparing yourself for a meeting. What do you do? You actually switch your phone. You get all your notes. Uh, you prepare yourself. Why don't you prepare yourself for a meeting with family? Yeah, it's the same. It's the same thing. So transition times between tasks. Turn one thing off. Um, let me put it this way: multi multitasking is a myth. It doesn't work. <laughs> it's a big mess. It works probably with women, but yes, it I was going to say my wife can do crazy stuff. But yeah. <laughs> So, uh, one thing as a task, Sig Ziglar says, stay present where you are. So, if I spend time with family, I turn off all my notifications, I turn off all my phones, nothing is that important that it can't wait for an hour. And, you know, like, a family, it doesn't ma um, ma uh, mean that you have to spend two, three hours with the family, um, they know exactly, but spend remarkable 15 minutes with each child or with half an hour remarkable moment with the whole family. Ask them how, how they, uh, you know, like have a really deep conversation. This is what children will remember. This is what you will remember. And our lives are actually memories. Fulfilled lives are lives with a lot of memories. So build those memories while you can. So I transition like times and stay focused where you are. So yeah, the transition. if you do business, do business, family, family. Yeah, that's a, a really good point because with working from home, uh, I, I've been working at my desk and I'll work until five o'clock and then you know, as soon as five o'clock hits, I walk out these two doors and then it's like, boom, I'm into the family. And it's like, uh, you know, the kids are screaming and I'm trying to wrestle one of my kids. So it's like I have, whereas I used to, you know, drive home from work and I'd have some decompression time. I'd listen to a podcast or some music, roll the windows down and just like take a deep breath from the day. But now it's just like work, boom. So it's, it's kind of like that transition time is, 
has disappeared. And I think we need to be intentional about that, especially when we're working from home, like many, many people. Absolutely. Are. Absolutely. Uh, and what, while working from home, uh, one, one more thing I would like to add here. Um, you know exactly from the college and university, university times that the exams came all in once and you had to learn everything all in once. So what I did back in the days, I had my corner, I switched my table and went in one corner for um, microeconomics. Another corner was for B2B marketing. Another corner was for something else. And when I was sitting and writing exams, I had, first of all, my memories. And the second one, I had the anchor. So yeah. when you do your work with such anchors, um, the transition times will be much easier. So it's not a boom anymore, but you have really a transition times. Uh, the problem is that you sit on one uh, table in front of the same screen, but doing different works. You don't have absolutely, it's messed up. It's everything at, in once, yeah? So split it and it's easier. Even if you just turn a couple degrees of your computer away doing another thing another task and back to, to to another task those small tricks will help you um have a, a better better classification within the day that's very good and one tip i would have is that and i've talked to a couple other folks who work from home that have their desk in their bedroom do not work at your desk in your bedroom because then you will get you will go crazy because you're literally rolling out of bed in the morning going to your desk, working all day, and then going back into your bed at night. And that, I, Absolutely. I, I did that for a short time when I was living with my parents while we were buying a house. We were closing on a house here, and we had moved from Utah to North Carolina. And I was desk to bed, desk to bed. That was what I did for you know weeks. And I was just like, this is driving me absolutely insane. And so you got to have a, a special space. Uh, keep the bedroom sacred as, as, what, uh, as, as of the advice absolutely. I want to give. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a subconscious, subconscious thing that bedroom is for relaxing. And while, when you are working there, there is no relaxing. There are problems you have to face. So you lie in the bed and have your problems in the head. You didn't leave them behind. Yeah. In They're just room. 10 feet yeah, in the bed, the desk right across the room. Totally. Yeah, that's, that's right. I really like that. Um, this, this has been great. Uh, one of the questions that we always ask our uh, the people that we interview on our podcast is about your personal creed. Um, and a, a creed is a set of beliefs or aims that guides someone's actions and what they do. Would you be able to share with us some of uh, aspects of your personal creed? Sure. Um, advantage and disadvantage in a business world at the same time is to be a real Christian. Um, I'll explain you why. Um, in the first job, I had to um, supply electric, uh, for power plants, a lot of uh, equipment. And uh, these guys are heavy drinkers. Like they drink li literally one liter of vodka in the morning to have they work in, in, in Siberia. It's a severe climate there. And when you say you, you are a Christian, uh, it's like, okay, I understand you don't drink. That's a good thing. Yeah? But sometimes it's, it's bad. So in sometimes it's bad. Why? Because people uh, start to treat you if they have a different uh, misbeliefs, but don't do business with them. So <laughs> my, personal, my personal beliefs uh, are uh, Christian beliefs. Uh, and this helped me to stay strong. Um, I love singing. I enjoy singing, and I suggest everybody to sing. Uh, it's uh, Studies have shown when you sing, your whole body starts to vibrate. You know exactly. It's not only humming where you feel it only in, in, in the fascia area. Your, your chest starts vibrating uh, and so on and so on. Um, when you sing, you uh, let a lot of bad energy flow away. You don't need to meditate and uh, go out and so on. Uh, it helps me, helped me personally a lot to get rid of a lot of stress. So singing, 
a lot of reading, yes, definitely. And one thing is for sure, write down your beliefs and your core values and never go against them, never. Uh, such business, which is very profitable, but is uh, bad in terms of going against your beliefs long term, it will break you twice or three times. I like what I like all of what you said, but one thing that I just specifically want to pick out is the singing. I think that that is is really really important. It's interesting that in some places in church you can't even sing now. Uh, they've banned singing. Uh, I personally feel like that's quite an overreach, but um, that's a whole different conversation. No, but, absolutely, uh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but I think you're. But totally, I totally agree with you. <laughs> I, I think you're right. I mean, like. Just singing those, you know, praises. What is it? What is the? It's a uh, the song of the righteous is a prayer unto God. Um, you know, I think that's so important. Uh, just to fill that your home with, with a, well, you know, right now it is our homes because everybody's in their home. Fill your home and, and your life with with songs of, of of praise and of of righteousness, or just songs that you like. And I think that that kind of changes your mood and puts you in that good mood. And I, that's that's one thing that uh, well, I like all of what you yeah, said, but that's one thing I really there, there's one 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 additional thing towards singing or uh, good, you know, like uh, we exhaust, we speak, we exhaust, we sing, we exhaust, and uh, the emotions are in the um, small driplets in our uh, air, and um, some of uh, scientists caught up negative one. And gave uh, gave it to smell to guinea pigs and the positive ones. Imagine what happened. The guinea pig died from uh, negative emotional breaths. So when you fill up your home with positivity, it's kind of never, never, I would never think about that, but it helps. When you fill up your home with positivity, with singing, the whole the whole environment around you will be felt as safe, secure. And, you know, when you feel secure, you can do more. You go out and dare more. And when you feel insecure, you go back in against the wall. No, don't touch me. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm not the best singer in the world, but I'm going to add to that as well as uh, laughter. I think laughter Absolutely. and happiness Absolutely. Can, can have a similar effect as well. Um, and just that positivity, uh, there's, there's a lot of, uh, things in, in life or in your day-to-day -day life or in world or in politics or whatever it may be that, that are constantly negative, 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 but just bringing that positivity personally with your family, with others, with clients or in your business, I think it, it sucks people in. It makes people want to be around you, which builds that relationship going way back to the beginning of our conversation, a solid relationship is really the key to, to success. Um, and so I, I really like that. Totally agree with you, Avon. Well, Stan, this has been excellent talking to you. You've been so insightful and so many great things we've pulled out of this. I've just been thinking of, you know, all these things. I need to get some different journals and start writing these things. Um, tell us about, uh, share with us what your Instagram is and we'll do a link in the show notes, but if you could just share what that is so folks can so, follow you. It's difficult to pronounce, <laughs> so it's easier to follow the link. Okay. Well, I'll put the it's link my in. my first name and my last name. So Stan Cherenko, uh, with T T S C H E R E N K O W. And I prefer, uh, I like what Arnold Schwarzenegger, by the way, said, um, his first agent said, like, you have to change your name. It's too complicated. And Arnold Schwarzenegger said, like, I will change you. If, when I get famous, everybody will remember my name. <laughs> and that's what's happening. Nice. Never be ashamed of your name. That's right. Never. It's your name. It's who you are. Excellent. I like that. Well, thank you so much. Well, f f and for those uh, out there, you can follow us at a.brothers.creed on Instagram and, um, and YouTube as well. And uh, thank you so much again for joining today. And let's go build that creed together. All right, let's do it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. <laughs>